Hello guys and welcome back to the How To Animate YouTube channel. I'm James and in today's video I'll be giving you some advice on the essential skills that you need to develop and how to demonstrate them in a showreel to land that first job as a character animator. The truth is that learning how to animate characters takes a lot of time and dedication, so you'll need to put the time in. They say it takes about 10,000 hours to master any skill, and this is certainly true in learning how to be an animator. You need to take the time to master the principles of animation, and this can only be done by a ton of practice. You might want to study at a formal institution, but be aware that a lot of these will just give you a broad overview of many disciplines and won't necessarily teach you to the level you need to get a job. There are exceptions to this of course, but make sure you research the place before you commit. Try to find out the percentage of students that actually make it into the industry. If you do find yourself on a course that doesn't focus 100% on animation, then you need to be prepared to do a lot of studying on your own to reach the required level to gain an entry level position. There are some great online courses that focus solely on character animations that are worth your consideration. They are all taught by professional animators. The three main ones are Animation Mentor, iAnimate and Anim School. They can be a bit pricey, but if you consider the standard of education you get and that you're being taught by some of the best people in the industry, it is well worth considering. However, I would say that after you graduate, make sure your showreel isn't just work you've done from these courses, as studios will want to see your work without the intensive feedback these professional animators provide. They need to see the level you're actually at, so take the time to create some shots on your own to show them what you have learnt. It is totally possible to be a self-taught animator, and I've met a lot of them. The truth is that even if you are studying on a course or not, it all depends on your passion and dedication to learn the craft. As long as you can make a showreel that will shine, it doesn't matter how you got there. So if you're not in a position to be able to study, don't be discouraged. It's totally possible to learn on your own. If you are trying to learn on your own, then try to reach out to other people that are in a similar situation for help and support. Your showreel is a sequence of shots that shows your best work. Typically, it should be between 2 and 3 minutes long, with your most impressive work being towards the front. Try to avoid flashy over-the-top intros. A simple screen showing your name and contact details will do. You can add music, but make sure it's not anything distracting. And if you have any acting shots, be sure to adjust the levels so the music doesn't drown out the VO. Be sure to tailor your showreel to the type of work the studio is known for take the time to research past projects. If it's a studio that makes high-end VFX for films with creatures, don't send them a showreel with super cartoony shots. Try to match the style of the studio to demonstrate you have the skills to work there. If you're applying to a game studio, then put animations you would typically see in games, such as idols, walks, runs, jumps, and action scenes. Try to gain some understanding of the technical aspects of game animation, such as exporting and implementation inside game engines. If it's for a cutscene animator, then create shots with good camera work, showing you know the principles of cinematography. Only put your best work on there. I've seen so many showreels that have shots of decent standard mixed with awful floaty shots that look like they were done by a completely different animator and the mind boggles that they can't tell the difference between the standards. It's best to show less of a higher quality than trying to pad out the length with shots that might actually cost you from getting the interview. So be smart about what you show, and try to find someone with more experience to advise you on which shots to ditch, but don't take it personally though. Be persistent and keep trying. If you don't succeed in getting an interview, then try asking for feedback on your reel. Sometimes you might get some great pointers, and if you take on board the feedback and apply it to your next attempt, it will show your determination. These interactions will also get you on the studio's radar, so always remain professional and thank them for any time they spend communicating with you. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section below. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Goodbye for now.